Rita Catherine Morrison Keegan. I say I'm an artist. I mean, it's, it was difficult to actually say the words, but um, yeah, I guess that's what I am. I was born in New York City. I was born in the Bronx. I first moved to South London, to Brixton, in, uh, ooh, 83, or maybe it was 82, and uh, was involved in Brixton Art Gallery. So I've been in South London off and on since 82. And uh, I like South London especially because of the cultural mix. You meet all types of people from all over the world, and I can get black eyed peas and sweet potatoes and stuff, and you know. It's good here. In a way, nobody belongs here, black or white. It's quite, you can, it's easy to belong here because everybody in their own way has that point of difference and that um, difference in communities and stuff. And the uh, reason I stayed was I was really excited about uh, the funding for the arts, um, the vibrant scenes here and stuff. And, and that was really exciting, getting involved with a collective gallery and, and learning how to put on exhibitions and meeting people from, you know, all sorts of different parts of the world. It gives you more of an understanding of who you are. Well, creativity is the most important thing, I think, in life. I mean, outside of food and a place to stay, is it gives, um, gives your world value. And, if people have their creativity and have an outlet for their creati creativity, then, then that's where they put it. They don't put it into to frustration and violence and pain. And if it is, is painful, then you turn it into art. You turn it into something valid. I was trained as a painter, so I do paintings. Uh, I did a lot of self-portraits, sort of Frida Carlo kind of thing. I didn't know that I was doing Frida Carlo paintings until I found out later, but the college I went to had Diego Rivera murals and, um, you know, so, but I guess it's, I was, I started painting myself because as a portrait painter, you would ask people to sit and they would ne not necessarily show up. And uh, if you're painting, you always have yourself to draw. And I, I use my um, image as, uh, you know, just as, as an exercise at first. And then the different ways that, that one changes and how you can change your image and, but still retain who you are. And I've always played with my image, you know, with clothing and hairstyles and stuff. And I find that quite interesting is, is how people perceive you depending on what you're wearing. And, uh, and then um, because I use um, family photographic images, I, I quite often included myself in those images as in um, memories of the past and your family, whether you love them or hate them, they go into making up who you are. Well, I figure if you know where you come from and you know who you are, you can figure out who you're going to be. And, um, I think that it's really important to see positive images of yourself and that if all you see, is the only way you've learned how to be is a negative image, then that's all you have to achieve, that's all you have to strive for and you know, you don't think it's possible to be anything other than, you know, hoods or whores or, you know, poor folk. And, and that does not really reflect the world. But if you don't see yourself reflected in those images, then you have to fight harder to be, to be something other than what you see. Well, I think um, feminism has been really important in my life. Uh, I guess that just stems from equality, hoping and working towards equality, whether it's race or gender. And, um, hoping that generations that come after me will not have to suffer and will will find that there is equality uh, and I you know not dealing with racism not having to deal with racism not having to um, constantly battle an invisible foe um, that's what I'd like to see 
I remember going to Bobby Seale's house in in, um, in San Francisco. I was visiting San Francisco, and it was in Oakland. I went, his house was in Oakland, and it had just recently been um, burnt by the police. Uh, he was a member of the Black Panthers. And as you walked in, in this burnt out shell, you could still feel the tear gas, your eyes still burned. Um, that was an amazing experience. Marching against the war in Vietnam, that was an amazing experience. Going to Altamont and watching the Hells Angels throw full beer cans, that was an experience. You know, getting overdressed and partying till I couldn't party anymore, those were great experiences. Uh, um, you know, so there, there, I don't think I have one defining moment. I'm hoping to keep on having more. Well, I'd like to tell the youth of today is obviously no one's going to do it for you, so you need to do it for yourself. You need to find places and create places around you to make things, to be creative, to um, not be afraid to discuss your problems and get off your ass and do stuff. So do it. <laughs>